called a pet project for me internally. And while sometimes I find that a frustrating description, it is true that for a very long time, I felt that flight into known ice or the known ice uh, changes to the airplane are, have really been the last most important change that we could still make to the utility of the airplane. Now, think about how you use your airplane. For most of us, it has become an essential part of our travel. It, it blends right into our lifestyle and we use it year round. But of course, for much of the nation, as we get into the colder months of the year, we start finding ourselves more and more limited by weather, by ice. Obviously, you can fly around thunderstorms, there are a lot of things you can do, but ice tends to be, particularly by forecast, a very, very broad problem. Made even worse by the vagueness of the FAA rules, questions about what is allowed and what isn't. So our solution to that has been to now certify the airplane for known ice, the final stages of which are still happening. What this will allow you to do is to take off into forecast ice, find the ice, and get out of it. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WAS GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WAS gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navbase. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. Now this is an important distinction and something we believe is just going to be very critical for everyone to continue to communicate. No one should continue to fly in known ice. This allows you to legally get there, but more importantly this allows you to safely get out of there. I can't stress again how important that is. If you find the ice, get out of it. Now, a lot of training needs to go into flying into ice. But one of the important parts of the training is understanding where ice is and where ice isn't. Typically, ice will be found in relatively small layers of the atmosphere, which means if you find the ice, go up, go down, go forward, go back, but don't stay in it. The FAA doesn't have rules on how long you can fly in known ice. And as many things in aviation, we really do rely on the judgment of the pilot. It is essential that the pilot, through training and proper decision making, knows what to do about ice when they get it. So the airplane will now be certified to fly into known ice. It will be the pilot's responsibility to get out of the ice. As most of you know, the Cirrus uh, SR-20 was originally certified in 1998, so we're, we're just over 10 years since that event. But we've also made continuous changes through the years on the airplane. The SR-22 following on with the larger engines, the primary flight display with Avidyne in uh, the early 2000s. Constant changes, turbos and so on, to improve the utility of the airplane. No nice is kind of that last big utility change, but it's part of this continuous trend of improving the airplane. Now what you'll recall, and what you'll notice from seeing SR-22s out at airports, is that for quite some time, we've had the TKS system on the airplane. For many years, the SR-22 has had what we call a no-hazard ice protection system, meaning it's not certified by the FAA for flight into known ice. You'll have noticed this for years, again, on the leading edge of the horizontal and on the wings. It's a titanium panel that's been laser drilled with tiny perforations that allows a fluid to come out and de-ice the airplane. Now, as a utility point, the idea of that was you were not allowed to fly into ice that you knew was there, but it's difficult to forecast so that it would still improve safety by allowing you to more quickly get the ice off the airplane while you're trying to get out of icing situations. But again, you're not allowed to fly into it, you just use it for escape. The new system has a lot of changes, a lot of testing to allow you to actually take off into forecast ice. Again, pilot judgment is essential, training is essential, and you must exit the ice as soon as you can. So the, the changes between the two systems are significant. The no hazard system had a single pump, smaller fluid capacity, and even all the panels uh, themselves were different. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly. 
to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. We've been working on this known ice certification for four years now. And early on, probably even our own internal expectations, but certainly the expectations of a number of people we talked to outside the company, were that how hard can it be? You add one more panel to the tail. And of course, it's much, much more complicated than that. Every part of the ICE protection system has changed. Significant amount of engineering, significant amount of testing, and you'll see shapes that were foam shapes glued on the airplanes to represent the amount of ice that, that doesn't come off. It's an incredible program. What we've also seen through these years, obviously, is a greater focus on icing as a potential hazard. We've had some accidents with our airplanes that have been uh, associated with ice, and obviously other manufacturers on, up into the airline range have seen that as well. So with that increased focus on the safety, there's obviously increased focus on the testing. A lot of testing to really demonstrate that the airplane can handle this. Now, we're going to get criticism for this. We understand that. We disagree, but we expect it. Uh, we will often be told that nobody should be flying a single-engine piston airplane in icing conditions. And let's take that to the opposite extreme to start with and take for granted that nobody should be flying any kind of airplane, I don't care how many engines or what type of power plant, in severe icing conditions, what the, uh, the, the weather community now calls uh, supercooled liquid droplets, uh, or SLDs. These are very, very hazardous weather events. Nobody should be flying in that. So the judgment here in between is that we will now have a system which after extensive testing, years of testing, will allow you to fly into forecast ice and the responsibility then remains on the pilot to exit that ice when you find it.